Hello everyone. Today we're going to be learning how to make a vector logo in Inkscape. I'm going to go over here and show you an example that I made. Now, this vector logo is going to be quick and simple. It's something that uh, you can use whenever you make a website or maybe for like an application icon. And it's a simple cloud inside a square. Very simple, flat. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to make this. So go to File, New. I'm just going to make a new document. Close this one. Drag this window. Let's hit 5 on the keyboard so we can zoom in. And to start, I'm going to start by dragging out a square. So I'm going to hold down control on a keyboard, drag out this square. And right now you can see that my square is not filled with anything. So let's click on one of these colors down here. And we can either use one of these colors or we can Go up here to Object, Fill and Stroke, and you're gonna get the you're gonna get the Fill and Stroke panel. And from here, we can play around with the colors. I'll use one of them, like a mint. So, startup color. A lot of startup companies use this color. So from here, let's go on and add a little bit of more detail. So I'm going to hit Control D after clicking on the square. And I'm going to bring the new square I just made down a little bit, resize that. And let's take away the fill. So in the fill panel, there's these different squares. For that do different things. So you have the pattern, the radial grand gradient, the linear gradient, and the flat color. We're going to go to no paint, so just that X. Go over to stroke, and we're going to add a flat color stroke. I'm going to choose white, and actually increase the size a little bit, holding down control. A little bit more and now I'm gonna center this square inside of the other square so to do that if you you first want to select the white square that border and then you will also want to select the other square and to do that like I said you select that you also want to be holding shift while you do that and click on the other one and now we're gonna go up here to the command bar and you're gonna see this icon here is called align and distribute objects. You're going to click on that and inside the align and distribute objects panel you want to select center on vertical axis. Select that and it moved a little bit on the, on the y-axis. Now we also want to center it on the x-axis. Uh, we're going to hit center on horizontal axis and there you go. I'm going to click on a canvas over here, the deselect, and you can see now it's centered. So we can close this now. And now we're going to make the clouds. So to make the clouds, I'm going to uh, click on the circle tool. And from there, I'm going to hold down control and just drag a circle here. Not too big. And let's take off that stroke and add a flat color, make it white. So there you go. I'm going to duplicate this circle, drag it over here, hold down control and make it a little bit bigger. Move it up a little bit. I'm going to grab another circle, hit control D to duplicate and drag that over here. I'm going to bring down the size a little bit. 
Um, that looks good right there. I'm going to leave that like that. So what I'm going to do is I am going to unite these three circles. So to do that, I'm going to select one of them, hold down shift, select the other one, and then select the last one. Go up to object, oh, actually go to the path, and then we're going to go to combine. Actually, we're going to go to Union, sorry. There you go. Always get those two confused. So, there you go. Now we have one object. And to add a little bit more detail, we're going to go over to Stroke Paint and add a flat color. And we can make it black. And then just bring it down. The A over here is the opacity. You can just bring that down a little bit. That looks good right there. Another thing I want to do is I want to add a little bit of shadow down here. And to do that, we can go over to the circle. And I'm not going to hold down the control this time. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag a flat circle under here. And we're actually going to take away the stroke, go over to fill, and make it black. From there, we're going to increase the blur and then bring down the opacity. Play around with that to get the right values. And that looks good right there. Move this a little bit up. Move that a little bit closer too. And then what we can do is just add the text in here. So to add text in Inkscape, you go over to the Tools box and click on Create and Edit Objects. This is this letter A. And that gives you this little A icon with this crosshair. And you can just click where you want the text to go. And you get that blinking line. And then you can just write whatever you want in for your um, fictional, fictional company. So I'm just going to go what I had with the example. Let's call it Cloud. And then from here, let's actually go back there. And you can actually change the size. Let's increase that. To change the size, you can also grab the corners like any other object, hold down control and, and bring that down. Where well, you can fine tune the size to fit your object. And then we're also gonna change the text. So highlight your your text and go up here to the tools control bar. And we're just going to find a sans serif text that uh looks good. Uh, I have a lot of fonts. I download um a lot of different fonts. Inkscape does come with some pretty cool fonts. So does your Mac computer if you if you're using this on Mac. Windows has different fonts. Yeah, you can just This is the problem of having a lot of fonts is that it takes a while to find something you you like. I mean, you can always select it and just play around with it. So that looks pretty cool too. Bring that over here. And then what I want to do is I want to cut this text into the cloud. 
So the cloud is going to have the shape of this text. To do that, after you position it the way you want it to, I'm going to hold down Shift, click on one of them, and then click on the cloud. And then go up to Path, and then click on Difference. And there you go. Now I can position the cloud where I want it. I can group these two together. To group, you can either hit Control G or you can go up to Object and Group. So now that these two gr are grouped together, I'm going to group the white border and the uh, big square. So Control G. I have two different groups, this one and this one. The reason I did this was I want to be able to center my cloud and my shadow inside my square. So now I can click on this and you can see that it's also has the bounding box all the way down here because that's the shadows in there too. And then I'm going to hold down shift and click on the background. Go over to the line and distribute objects icon. And I'm going to do the same thing I did in the beginning. I'm going to center vertical axis and center horizontal. I'm going to click on the canvas to deselect everything. And you can see everything now is centered. Close these panels. That looks good. Now, something I want to note is whenever you're making uh, um, your different projects, you always want to save often. Um, that's something I didn't do in this video because um, it's not something really important. But when you're working on client projects or you're working on different other projects for yourself, you always want to save often. So to save, you can either hit this icon or you can go to File, Save. The shortcut is Control S. When you save, you're going to hit this dialog box and you can change the name of your um, file. So I'm just going to call that my first initial last name, Cloud Logo. You're going to see it's going to save as an SVG. And we're going to save it to the desktop. Hit save. And now that we save this, I also want to change my document. Because right now our page is set to A4. Which, as you can see, is bigger than our design. So now that we know the dimensions of our design, we can go over to File, Document Properties. And where it says custom size, we're going to go to resize page to content. And just click on resize page to drawing or selection. Once we do that, you're going to see that it immediately changes the page size. And now we have our page directly uh, sized to our design. I'm going to go over to save again, save that. And we're done for today. Check out the other videos and I hope you learned something today. Thank you.